guys welcome back to my youtube channel in today's tutorial we're going to be crocheting this very beautiful mitra i'm very sure you can't tell that this is crochet but this is crochet and i'll be teaching you guys how to make this neat stitch with a crochet hook and i teach how to make this for different sizes this pattern is totally measurement based so you can customize this to fit whatever size that you want and before we start off the main tutorial please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel and if you're a returning viewer are you still yet to subscribe to my channel what are you waiting for please subscribe to my channel give this video a thumbs up and you're not going to regret it now let's get into the tutorial in today's tutorial i'll be using a 4 ply milk cotton yarn and a 7 mm hook so you know the drill right you can make use of any yarn that you have available and you can make use of any hook you have available just make sure that you take your measurements right and you'll be able to crochet this very beautiful shrub now in this tutorial I'll be making mine for a size large but I'll be teaching you guys how to take your measurements so that you can make this to suit your perfect size. Now the first measurement you're going to need is the height of the shrug. To do that you're going to place your tape from your shoulder blades down to where you want your shrug to stop. So for me I want mine to stop a little bit above my boob area as seen on the picture and I got 10 inches the next measurement you're going to be needing is the measurement for the width of your top the front and back panel and once you've gotten your full bust measurement you're going to divide it by 2 mine is 36 and 36 divided by 2 is 18 so the width of my front and back panel is going to be 18 inches we're going to start making the front and back panels first before we move to the sleeves. So the first thing you need to do is to make a slip knot like so. If that was too fast, you can reduce the playback speed to see how I made this in a slower pace. After you've done this, you're going to go ahead and make enough chains now measure up to the height of your top so remember i said mine is 10 inches so i'm going to make as much chains and measure up to 10 inches i'm done with mine and i did a total of 40 chains and this measures up to 10 inches now once you've gotten your desired amount of chains, chain up one extra, like so. Then, yarn over, now, skip this last chain, which is this, the last chain that you just made, and go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through. Now you should have three loops on your hook. You're going to pull this last loop, which is this, through the remaining two loops. Once you've done that, we're going to make one of the stitch into each of the foundation chains that we made till we get to the very last chain here. So, yarn over and into the next chain space, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull through. You should have three loops on your hook. So you're going to pull this last loop through the two loops. Thank you. 
I walk till I go to my last chain, which is this. So I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the stitch into the last chain. I forgot to add this tip and this is for beginners. You want to make your work stress free. Attach your stitch marker to the very first single crochet that you make on each row. So I'll attach my stitch marker here. This is the first single crochet that I make. So now we'll go ahead and make row two. For row two, you're going to chain up one and turn your work. Now we're going to be doing something a bit different. Instead of working into the top of our stitches, you'll notice there's like a V shape on top of our stitches. We'll be working into the side. Now, if you flip your work to the side like this, you'll notice another V shape on the sides. So you're just going to yarn over and remember to Turn your work to the side and not walk into the top of your stitch. So into the side, you insert your hook into the bottom part of the V on your first stitch. So this is the V on the first stitch. Insert your hook into the bottom, which is this one. Then yarn over through and put your last loop into the remaining two loops like we've been doing so you're going to repeat this to get to the very last stitch for this row now let's do this again in case you didn't get it the first time yarn over and always remember to work into the side v pattern not on top as you keep on doing this it will become easier for you to differentiate the stitches on top and the stitches on the side as this one on top will look smaller so now insert your hook into the bottom V on the side of your next stitch this is my next stitch this is the top and this is the side now insert your hook into the bottom V for the side and yarn over you should have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through the two loops so into the next stitch do the same ignore the v on top and turn your work to the side insert your hook into the bottom v on the side and make your stitch so yarn over and repeat this to you get to the very last stitch like I said as you keep on working it will become much easier for you to identify the bottom V and the top part of your stitch will start to look like this it will start to create a neat stitch pattern So I've worked till I got to my last stitch. Remember, I placed a stitch marker to identify mine. I'm going to remove my stitch marker. Then I would finish up. Yarn over, insert your hook into the bottom of this stitch. Then yarn over, pull through, then pull through your two loops. And this is how the front should look like. And this is how the back looks like now for row three chain up one turn your work yarn over we are going to work on top now instead of the sides like we did for row two so for row three make sure your work is facing you this is the front of each stitch that we made on row two so we are going to work into the back loop of each stitch. So how to identify the back loop? The back loop is the side of this 
v on each stitch that is not facing you directly so i'm sitting like this and this is the side facing me directly and this is my back loop now insert your hook into the back loop yarn over pull through then yarn over pull through your two loops so we're going to do this till we get to the very last stitch for this row so yarn over and insert your hook into the back loop of the next stitch So repeat this till you get to the end of your row. So I've worked till I got to my very last stitch. Remember, if it will be very hard for you to identify yours, always place your stitch marker in the very first stitch that you make on each row. Now I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing. Yarn over and I will insert my hook into the back loop of the last stitch. So another thing you can do to make sure you're on track is to count your stitches after each row to make sure that you didn't miss any stitch. You should have the same amount of stitches as your foundation chain. Remember I did a total of 40 chains for mine. So the number of stitches on each row I made for this top should equal 40 stitches. Now for the rest of the top to so this measures half of your bust measurement you're going to be repeating rows two and three i'll go ahead and do row two again in case you didn't get it the first time so now for row four we would repeat row two chain up one and turn your work yarn over and would place a hook into the bottom v Remember, for the row to repeat, we are not working on top, but the side. And yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. So just repeat that so you get to the end of the row. So I walked till I got to the last stitch for my row 4. Now for row 5, we would repeat row 3. Chain up on, turn your work, and we will now be working on the top part of our stitch. And remember, we will be working into the back loop only. Yarn over, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull through, then you're going to pull through the remaining two loops. So insert your hook into the back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops like we did. I think this third row repeat is quite easier than the sec the second row repeat than the second row repeat. So just do this till you get to the end of the row. And this is where I'm going to stop because making more rows will be repetitive. So continue. After this row, you make you repeat row two. And after making row two, you repeat row three. Like so, like so. So the width of your top measures up to half of your bust measurement. So mine is 18. I would have to do this till. So Till this measures up to 18 inches. So once you've made your desired number of rows, you're going to chain up one and cut. So guys, this is my own front panel. 
I made about 50 rows. So how I count my rows is that I just go ahead and count the tiny rib pattern in the front. So I did about 50 of this and this measured up to 18 inches. Now you're going to go ahead and make another panel exactly like the one that you made. And don't be worried if yours curved like this because mine also did. So when you're done with your front and back panel, the next thing you're going to have to make is the sleeves. Now for the sleeves, similar pattern. The only difference was that I made a total of 90 chains for my sleeves and this measures 20 inches. So you can either work with the same measurement that I used or you can take your measurement, measure from your shoulder blade down to where you want your sleeves to stop at. So for me, 20 inches of length is enough for my sleeve. And I did a total of 42 rows for my sleeve. So you would need to make two sleeves actually. After you're done making one sleeve, make another sleeve exactly like the first one you made. Same number of foundation chains and same number of rows. So once you have all of this made, we'll go ahead and attach our shrug. The first thing we'll have to make is the neckline. Now I would advise you place this across your neck to determine how wide you want your neckline to be. You can play with this. You can make your neckline small. You can also make it off shoulder, but I really don't want mine to be too small or too big. So I'll place mine on my neck and I'll tell you um, the length that I'll be leaving in the middle for my neckline. So I've already identified where I want my neckline to start and to end from here to here measures nine inches so i left a total of nine inches for my neckline and something that's very important to note is that the number of stitches that you skip for here should be the same number of stitches that you skip for here when creating your neckline so i skipped a total of 12 stitches for this side and I skipped a total of 12 stitches for this other side as well and I also identified for the second panel very important because we'll be attaching both of them together so we're going to be working on one side of our neckline first and I'm opting for a smaller hook so that it will be easy for me to make my slip stitches so what I'm going to do now is to flip my work to the back um, I don't want my slip stitches to be obvious at the front this is the back flip the other one to the back as well you're going to insert your hook into the last stitch of one panel and into the last stitch of the second panel which is here and you're going to go ahead and attach your yarn and make it slip knot. So we'll be making slip stitches into each of the stitches till we get to where we place our stitch marker. So now into the next stitch, insert your hook and into the next stitch on the second panel, insert your hook yarn over and make a slip stitch so now go into the next stitch on this panel and into the next stitch on the other panel sorry if this is a bit difficult to see then yarn over and make a slip stitch so you can actually join with the dani needle it's just that i prefer slip stitching Insert your hook into the next stitch and into the next stitch on the other panel and make a slip stitch. You insert your hook into the next stitch on this panel and into the next stitch of the other panel, make a slip stitch. 
So repeat this till you get to where you placed your stitch marker. So I've made my slip stitch in. So I go to where I placed my stitch marker. I'm going to remove my stitch marker on this panel and insert my hook into that stitch and into the same stitch on the second panel and make a slip stitch chain up one and cut go ahead and repeat the same thing for the second side of your top as well Done with the neckline this is how it looks it's so pretty the next thing to do is to attach the sleeves so now to attach our sleeves we're going to open up our top like this to attach the sleeves you have to figure out your middle stitch remember i did a total of 42 rows for this sleeve and it measures 14 inches this is the middle of my stitch on this side i have 21 stitches on this side i have 21 stitches I inserted my stitch marker into this tiny gap in between the two knit stitches here. Now remember, flip your work to the back and attach to these slip stitches we made in joining both panels. So once you've done that, the next thing to do is to kind of Figure how many stitches would slip stitch into for the side. Now remember, the width of my sleeve is 14 inches, so I have to divide that by 2 since I'm attaching it to both of my panels. And that is 7 inches. So I'm going to get my tape and measure from here, where I place my stitch marker here to join down. So I get seven inches and I'll trace that and place a stitch marker. Into that stitch and into the last stitch for my sleeve on this side. So do the same for the other side as well. Then we can start slip stitching. So we'll start from one side. Remove your stitch marker and insert your hook into both panels. That's for the body and the sleeve. Attach your yarn and make a slip stitch. So we're going to make random slip stitches into both panels now insert your hook into the next stitch what i like to do is to just hold my work like this because you're not working accordingly so just try and hold your hold both panels together like so so insert your hook into the next stitch and into the stitch directly opposite on your sleeve and make a slip stitch into the next stitch on the body and the stitch directly opposite on the sleeve and you make a slip stitch remember these stitches are random so just try and always stretch out your work make sure they are aligned before you make your slip stitches and keep doing this till you get to the very last stitch marker that you placed here so you're going to make your slip stitches so you get to the middle you remove this slip stitch to join and continue till you get to where you placed your last stitch marker so i'm done attaching my sleeves so i'm just going to chain up one and cut So go ahead and do the same thing here for the other side as well 
and I'll meet you guys when I'm done with mine. Sorry that my workspace is very small, but I'm done attaching both of my sleeves. Now, fold your work into two, that's your front and your back panel. Just hold on to this part that you attached for your neckline and fold. And this is how it should look like. So, what's left to do is to attach the bottom of the shrug and the body of the sleeves. And this is quite easy. We're also going to be attaching with slip stitches. And I like to start from the bottom of the top and work my way down to the sleeves. Just attach your yarn as usual to both panels and remember to work at the back so that the front looks neat. So insert your hook in the very last stitch here. Remember I'm working at the bottom of the shrug. And on the last stitch for the side as well and attach your yarn. Make a slip knot. And once you've done that, you're going to continue making your slip stitches. Now for this, we won't be doing it randomly since both sides look the same. So now, you're going to go into the next stitch and insert your hook. And into the next stitch on this other side, insert your hook and make a slip stitch. So in the next stitch on this panel, insert your hook. In the next stitch on this other side, insert your hook and make it slip stitch. So we are going to repeat this process from here downwards till we get to the bottom of our sleeves. I have made my slip stitches from the bottom down to my sleeve so I'm going to chain up on and cut as usual do the same for the other sleeve as well and hide your loose end after you're done you're going to flip your work to the front and this is where we're going to stop for this tutorial the shrug is now ready to wear I love 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 the color selection I used for my shirt let me know in the comment section what color you're going to be using to make your own shirt and I look forward to seeing pictures of your work you can send your pictures through any of my social media platforms it's really really make my day if you found this video helpful please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for now bye see you guys in another tutorial